in uh, this lesson we revise uh, our knowledge of uh, atomic models and uh, quantum mechanics, uh, quantum physics, uh, in order to understand uh, the limitations uh, of uh, Bohr's atom and how physicists like uh, uh, Schrödinger, De Broglie, Dirac uh, had some uh, made um, a great contribution to overcome this limitation. Okay, lesson prerequisites. Uh, we know that uh, an ancient uh, Greek philosopher, Democritus, said, uh, introduced the word uh, atom, that means a particle that cannot be divided into several parts. But uh, we have to wait until uh, the late 19th century in order to have uh, scientific atomic models. Uh, so, what do you think when you look at this picture? Andrea? And this is uh, the Thomas model, also called plum padding. Right. Why what plum padding? The, because uh, his shape is similar to a plum padding. Right. And we have a thick positive mass with, with, uh, with electronegative. Right. It's correct. Okay. So, uh, Thomson model, plum padding, negative electron in an electrically neutral atom. But uh, we had uh, some problems. Uh, physicists uh, had some problems with this model. In fact, uh, we have a second picture. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Look at this picture. Uh, it's uh, the Rutherford uh, model right. that uh, he designed after uh, an experiment in which uh, he bombarded uh, the a golden lift uh, with alpha particles right. and uh, he understand that the particles uh, go through the Leaf, golden leaf. Passed through this uh, uh, golden leaf. Okay, and we call this uh, solar system model because uh, it looks like uh, a solar system. But uh, also in that case uh, we have problems uh, and we have to wait uh, Bohr model in order to overcome this limitation. Uh, Bohr, this <laughs> physicist, uh, made uh, some assumptions. Uh, do you remember some of these assumptions? Uh, some assumptions of uh, the Bohr model are that uh, the electrons move uh, in a circular orbit right, correct. and uh, the, these electrons in certain orbits lose uh, the energy. Okay, they lose energy and this is the most important uh, problem because uh, an electrically charged uh, uh, particle, according to Maxwell theory, loses energy because it's as, it is accelerated. <coughs> So, uh, he introduced a, an orbit in which this does not happen. In this orbit, electrons do not give off radiation. And he introduced this formula. What is the meaning of this formula? Andrea? It is uh, the um, angular momentum. It L, is, uh, okay. Right. It is uh, equal to the, um, an integer. Uh, multiplied by Planck constant divided by two uh, double p. Okay, double p. Okay, so in these orbits, okay, quantized orbits, we do not have this problem. Electrons do not give up radiation, and uh, we also have another uh, assumption. You remember? Yes. Okay. When um, when um, change the orb the orbit. Um, Gave, uh, uh, gave off uh, or bring uh, some photons. It's correct, okay. It's a summarized. Yeah. Okay, so Bohr's model <coughs> gives correct predictions. It was a very, it was a great idea, but uh, he was not able to justify from a physical point of view the reason why we choose particular quantized orbit. So how can we justify the assumption regarding the angular momentum quantization? In 1923, De Broglie, De Broglie proposed a theory. In 1923, De Broglie, De Broglie proposed that uh, as wave can exhibit uh, uh, particles-like behavior according to Einstein's um, explana explanation uh, of uh, photoelectric effect. Right. Um, so particles um, should exhibit uh, wave-like behavior. Correct. Particles should exhibit wave-like behavior. Okay, this sentence is very important. In fact, it's uh, yellow. And uh, uh, according uh, to this theory, <coughs> he, 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 he
the, so in which um, he said that uh, wavelength uh, is equal to Planck constant divided by line linear momentum. Okay, and this formula that is very simple is extremely important because on the left we have a physical quantity that is wavelength and wavelength is related to waves while on the right we have the linear momentum that is the product of mass and velocity and it's related to mechanics, to uh, physical particles and in the middle we have an equal sign so in a certain way we can say that waves are particles and vice versa okay this is extremely important uh, this center, sentence is uh, summarized here and uh, using this formula we arrive uh, at uh, the correct explanation of a Bohr's assumption so here we see standing waves uh, you remember standing waves you already seen it later uh, uh, previously sorry yeah um, this uh, is possible because the line of uh, the circle in a stable uh, orbit is an right. uh, integral multiple of uh, the wavelength. It's correct. So here we have uh, an integer multiple of a wavelength and uh, so we have a standing wave. In the, this same second picture we don't have an integer multiple so we don't have, uh, we don't have a standing wave and uh, the electron cannot exist in this situation. So we have only stable uh, quantized uh, orbits. And uh, if uh, we introduce uh, uh, this calculation of uh, an integer multiple, uh, we obtain the same assumption of Bohr, as Bohr predicted. The angular momentum equals, as uh, Andrea said, an age divided by double P. OK, uh, but uh, we have uh, physicists uh, that uh, gave another important contribution because uh, we discover after Heisenberg principle in the termination principle that the position of the electron cannot be detected so we, can, we cannot talk about orbits we have to talk about a volume where the probability to find an electron is high and we call this volume orbital okay uh, of course well, this is the formula introduced by Schrödinger in order to identify this volume. And of course, uh, we don't have uh, a, uh, a level in mathematics uh, which is sufficiently high to understand this uh, formula. But uh, we can uh, understand uh, its spirit. Uh, I mean that uh, this is an energy conservation principle. The first uh, part uh, is uh, uh, kinetic energy. Okay, we have already seen uh, this formula in mechanics. The second part is uh, potential energy and this is total energy. So the sum of kinetic and potential energy gives uh, total energy. Right? And uh, uh, Psi is uh, simply a traveling wave. Okay? An amplitude multiplied by, by the sine of uh, omega t. Okay, uh, last uh, picture we know that uh, Schrödinger did not use uh, the relativistic uh, theory of uh, Einstein uh, and uh, uh, another physicist, Dirac, uh, introduced uh, this theory into Schrödinger's model uh, we know from uh, special relativity that the energy is a quadratic expression and every quadratic equation has two solutions one positive and the other one negative so in mathematics, a positive uh, solution and a negative solution uh, is not a problem. But in physics, what does it mean? Well, it means that uh, we have matter and something different from matter. We will call, uh, starting from Dirac, uh, this matter antimatter. Okay, so we have uh, E plus and E negative matter and antimatter. Okay, now. Uh, in this slide we have uh, what I call a conceptual checkpoint in order to understand whether you have understood what uh, we have seen uh, recently. Uh, someone, could you please uh, read this problem? Can I read it? Okay. Um, the wavelength of the photon emitted when an electron in hydrogen jumps from state uh, atomic number 3 to atomic number 2 is uh, A greater than or B less than or equal to the wavelength of the photon when the electron jumps from atomic number 2 to atomic number 1? 
Okay, so now let's think of this problem. Okay, we can have a brief discussion and then uh, Lorenzo, if you like, you can uh, come here and uh, try to solve this problem. I take uh, the whiteboard. Okay, Lorenzo, please. First of all, try to summarize uh, the data we have. So, draw uh, a nucleus with uh, two orbits. Meanwhile, uh, you all try to solve this problem. Eh? Okay, the positive nucleus and the two levels. Okay. So, um, to answer this problem, uh, we should consider two formulas. The first uh, is uh, energy. Okay, speak loud. Equals uh, uh, Planck's uh, constant multiplied by frequency. Okay. And, this is uh, correct. The second one is uh, the wavelength, lambda, uh, which uh, is equal to the uh, speed of light multiplied by period. Great. Um, but uh, it can uh, be written uh, to in another way, which is more useful. Uh, speed of light over frequency and uh, here um, we can find uh, the frequency which is uh, speed of light over lambda okay and uh, we can conclude that uh, um, the energy is equal to constant uh, multiplied by speed of light uh, over frequency. Uh, no, 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 you must use it. Okay. The second one, this one. Over lambda. Okay. And uh, here we can see that uh, the energy is uh, inversely proportional to the wavelength. And uh, so, um, to answer the problem, uh, the the jump from atomic number 3 to atomic number 2 is greater than uh, the jump uh, from atomic number uh, uh, 2 from 1. Okay, because energy is inversely proportional to uh, the wavelength lambda. Okay, thank you for your contribution. Have you understood? It's clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you must thank uh, Lorenzo for his help. Okay, let's continue. Uh, So as uh, we have already seen, wavelength is uh, inversely proportional to the energy difference. Uh, therefore, the answer, the correct answer, is uh, the answer given by Lorenzo. Uh, Real-world physics. Uh, there are many examples uh, in uh, our world uh, where uh, these uh, concepts of physics are used. Uh, for instance, uh, fluorescence, uh, lasers, uh, X-rays. Uh, okay, <coughs> we will see these uh, concept later because they are very interesting. But now we have to conclude our lesson and uh, a brief uh, uh, review of what we have seen. So early models of atom, start from Democritus, to Thomson, Rutherford, <coughs> then Bohr's model, these assumptions, De Broglie waves, particles are waves, and then quantum mechanical models, Schrödinger, Dirac, and so on. I would like to stress uh, this slide, uh, the concepts uh, that are included in this slide, uh, because uh, uh, very often uh, in modern physics, uh, physics uh, physicists use the concepts that were uh, used previously. Okay, so uh, we have seen orbits. Uh, orbits are related to the gravitational field. What do you remember of uh, Alessandro, please. Yes, we saw uh, the Newton universal gravitational law. 
and this law was used uh, to identify the planet's orbit and it uh, equals uh, to the gravitation constant yeah. multiplied by the mass of the first planet uh, to the mass of the second one and divided by it to their distance square, square right. and uh, the same law was used uh, by Bohr. It's correct. So, Newton's uh, law are included in Bohr's model, okay? Not only this, but also a second part. We are talking about black body radiation uh, and this formula. So, we're so Amanda. Mark studied the black body radiation. He suggested that the energy was on this side. So, then he theorized the, the, this formula. So, energy is equal to the product of uh, the frequency yep. and a constant named the uh, black constant. Okay, <coughs> great. <coughs> orbits uh, and we have seen standing waves. Uh, we have already seen uh, standing waves uh, when we study mechanical mechanical waves. Uh, right. But uh, they can be used uh, to measure also orbits and uh, electrons. Okay. And uh, this concept was very important to solve the problem uh, of uh, to identify the reason why uh, we have uh, quantized uh, orbits, uh, okay? Not all or orbits uh, are allowed. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, of course, we have seen in Schrodinger's equation uh, that it obeys uh, a very famous law that is uh, energy conservation principle. Okay, that's it. Thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow.